deal with airplane peanuts. From the 30 times Cat Williams has been arrested. Have you ever spent time in jail? 30 times. <laughs> <laughs> to all the wild prison stories from Joey Diaz, these are eight of the most famous comedians who have been locked up. Starting off with the man who was arrested for doing stand-up back in 1961. No one took that risk more than Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce was arrested many, many times. It, ultimately, it wound up costing him his life. I mean, he died on the bathroom floor shooting heroin and trying to cope with all the lawsuits that he was going through. I mean, this guy was constantly being arrested and constantly going through lawsuits. And then his, his comedy deteriorated horribly. There's some footage of him towards the end of his career where he essentially would go on stage with legal papers and read from the legal papers about his case. Lenny Bruce isn't the only comedian who's been arrested more than once, as Cat Williams has been detained perhaps more than anyone on this list, even if it's never been by choice. I've never been in jail and it was my decision to be there. If you want to tell me that you're going to pull me over 15 times looking for it, I'm going to tell you 15 times you're going to find it. Unfortunately, I smoke cigarettes and weed. If you catch me 15 times, 15 times I'm gonna have it on me. What do you think I'm in jail thinking? Oh, I don't f up. <laughs> Damn these decisions. No, I, when I'm in there, I'm fine and I'm understanding that I'm put here for a reason and the people that get joy off me being in here are really gonna look stupid because I'm finna be free because you gotta be setting this up. I'm never anywhere to get anything. You don't know I just made $300,000 in your city. That's why you think I might be out here as a ne'er-do-well. You think I'm, he's smoking weed? Yeah, he's got a medical license for it. He needs it, it's his only medication. Do you mind if he takes it? It helps him eat, cause he does 19,100 city tours, flying across the line. And so he doesn't get hungry on the regular. He doesn't get sleepy at night. He's gotta literally put himself to sleep. He's literally gotta make himself eat. So this marijuana helps him do both of those things. Richard Pryor has had his own stints behind bars for disorderly conduct and drug-related charges, but the legendary comic also had some great jokes about visiting prison. I went to penitentiary, Gene Wilder, I did a movie, I went to, not me personally, I mean, I went to do a film in penitentiary. So I was up there six weeks, Arizona State Penitentiary. It was something, oh, you applauding for that? <laughs> Arizona State Penitentiary, real popular. <laughs> Oh man, it was strange because it's like 80% black people. And what's strange about that is that there are no black people in Arizona. <laughs> I'm not lying, they bust motherfuckers in. And I was up there and I, I looked at all the brothers and it made my heart ache. You know, it's all these beautiful black men in the joint. God damn, warriors should be out there helping the masses. And I, I felt that way. I was real naive, right? And six weeks I was up there, I talked to the brothers, you know, and I talked to them, and thank God we got penitentiaries. <laughs> I asked them, I said, why did you kill everybody in the house? <laughs> because if they was home. I mean, murderers, <laughs> do you hear me? Real live murderers. I thought black people killed people by accident. <laughs> no, these motherfuckers was murderers. <laughs> I met one brother, his name was J-Bo, motherfucker lift weights, he was in charge of it. J-Bo, muscles every motherfucker. That's my man, muscles in. He was doing a sentence, triple life. <laughs> How in the fuck do you do? Triple life. One of the wildest stories on this list comes to us from the time Ron White had his plane searched while landing for a show in Florida back in 2008. You'd hear Vero Beach very seldom. And then one day they were like, hey, you know what happened in Vero Beach? Ron White got arrested here. And I was like, what? I was flying in there for two shows at the Sunrise Theater, I believe, in <coughs> Fort Pierce. And I was on the plane. It was, it's my plane by myself with two pilots. And, the, and there were new pilots because I fired my old pilots. The old pilots decided it would be great to call a number and report a drug smuggler. So before I would land, that's what they would do. And, and, uh, but it never worked, but this time it did. And so I'm just sitting on the plane and I noticed there's, you know, people in flag jackets and dogs and, and I'm like, I wonder what's going on. 
there. So they, you know, they get me off the plane, and th these cops were solid dudes, and they were fans. He said, "Can we search the plane? It'll all be better if we can just determine that you're not a drug smuggler, which we already know you're not. You're here to do a show. We all, we all totally get it." We're fans. We have tickets. Yeah, <laughs> right. So I'm like, yeah, go ahead, search the plane. So they put drug dogs on the plane. Well, of course, I smoke pot on the plane, so the dogs are. Rawr, 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 rawr. Yeah. I don't know what that's uh, all about, but then the guy goes, uh, the dog needs to sniff that bag on your shoulder, and I was like, rawr, rawr. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> literally, there was seven eighths they of a gram, no, of marijuana. They weighed it seven eighths of a gram. Which is out of weed, right? That's that means you don't have any you don't pot. have weed. Yeah, you have any pot? No, <laughs> seven eighths of a gram. Yeah, whatever f nut at the station. The chief said, "Bring him in. He's a flight risk. He's got a plane." And uh, and they were so apologetic that were like because the, they had to do what he said. Yeah, you sure. Know? So they're like, "Mr. White, you're gonna hate us." And I'm like, "What?" And I got I got a show to do, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah. and he goes, uh, "They're gonna make us bring in." I'm like, "For." For this, for seven eighths of a gram of pot, which they already said would be no big deal. Because I, yeah. when, when they said, look in the bag, I showed them that. And they're like, ah, oh, that's not it. And uh, so, handcuffed me, put me in the cop car, and took me down. And so, I had done seven shows since I'd been home. So, I had $35,000 cash in my this bag that I carry. And this guy's like, well, I'm going to need to count that money. I'm like, oh, oh it's going to take a while. And he's like, one, <laughs> one, one thousand, yeah, two, true. one thousand. I'm oh, like, Jesus. no, you can't count it like that. Count out stacks of a hundred. One, two, three, four, five. I'm teaching this mother how to count, count. <laughs> right? And um, they move me from city jail to county jail, and the whole thing's going down uh, the tube. The people are there, like, hey, he just got moved over to county jail on the house, but they're the announcing. Like, yeah, so there was a, a truckload of, of kids, a pickup truck full of kids that had these big signs that they'd already made that said, Free Tater. <laughs> and, uh, and God, I hate myself for being in such a hurry yeah. that I couldn't stop and address that, take sure. a picture with them or something, sure. but I was two hours late to this show, so, yeah. and uh, not one person left. Everybody stayed there they for stayed. two hours waiting for me to get out of jail. What was that like and, walking uh, out that night? It was it was absolutely one of the most insane responses I've ever, ever gotten walking on stage. On a darker note, the most famous and heinous comedian to ever be arrested is none other than Bill Cosby, who spent three years in prison for drugging and raping over 60 women. As the smuggest <laughs> old black male public persona that I hate. <laughs> One of the most notorious examples of a comedian going to jail comes to us from Tim Allen, who spent two and a half years locked up for felony drug trafficking charges in 1978 before going on to become one of the most successful comedians of all time and serving as an inspiration to fellow comics on this list. When I walked into the green room, there was one comic in there, and the comic's name was Tim Allen. It's f***ing Tim Allen, shining his shoes. You know, like a guy has a, a foot up on a counter, and they're shining their shoes? Let me tell you something, man. I didn't say nothing. Diane Ford came in, and she goes, Tim Allen, Joey Diaz, Joey Diaz, Tim Allen. We shook hands. I didn't say nothing. In fact, he f came to me and he's like hey man can you do extra time and i'm like yeah why he goes i haven't been on stage in months i don't know what this is gonna be like and i'm like i got you don't worry about nothing and i didn't play him i didn't try to be f cute i just shut my mouth and i drank my water you know i just so happened to go on stage that night and by the luck of god i leveled the f room and he came over to me and said that was great kid and how long have you been doing this da, 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 da. so we get back to the room and after about an hour i try you know you try to control yourself you know you try not to be a half a f and go i'm a huge fan you know i went to prison you know i think maybe the next night 
I said, damn, I go, I just want to tell you something that you helped me get from point A to point B. You were like my Federal Express. I had a felony. I went to prison and I, and I got into comedy. How far could I go make this a career? I didn't know if clubs did background checks. You know, I just didn't know at the time. Once I saw that you had gone to prison, it made my life a lot easier. I go, I'm such a fan of yours that when I had a pick on what city to go on the road first, I picked Detroit out of homage to you. Joey Diaz was locked up in 1988 on felony kidnapping and aggravated robbery charges. But it was in prison where his comedy journey would begin. Just before I went to prison, just before I committed that kidnapping, like two days before that, there was a guy at that Subaru dealer I did not get along with. We had had words one day, we just did not get along. One night I was sitting there, his name was Grant Fusemith. I still remember this motherfucker. And he came up to me and he goes, hey, man, I know you don't like me, but I got to tell you something. I go, what's that? He goes, ask me what I did before I worked here at a car dealer. I go, I don't know. You know, when you're, when you're 20, some old guys talking yeah, to you, like, I don't know. Go ahead, tell me. Yeah. And he goes, I was an entertainment director at a casino in Las Vegas. I don't know which one, but it was a big one at the time. Sands, I don't know. And he just drew up and considered doing stand-up comedy. Just because he saw you busting balls, he saw you telling stories. Get the out of my face, stand-up comedy. Think the I can snort. Go away. That's I my mean, at hobby. the time, that was yeah. part, like, of, what you, part of what stand-up comedians did. Yeah. Yeah. You said you liked Friday, right? When I got locked up at Camp George West, Thursday night was movie night. They didn't have what we have now. They had the fucking reel-to-reel. Mm. <laughs> All right? <laughs> There's a projector going? Yeah, like a <laughs> fucking American. Okay, yeah. And then it breaks and, Red, fix that fucking yeah. thing, yeah. you motherfuckers. Yeah. And he would have to get up and fix the projector. Wow. And in the meantime, the guys would say, because in the kitchens, I would, I would tell the guys, listen, don't eat that food. I would check the meat in, so I knew if the meat was good or not. That's uh, why I went to the bodega, mm -hmm. to get meat and everything else for me and my buddies. So when they would come in, I'd go, don't do it! <laughs> and they'd all be yelling, all right, let's get out. Cuba wow. told us. So all the brothers would go, Cuba told us not to eat that shit. So I'd be yelling at them, don't do it! Don't do it! And then just... And around, I had a friend in the kitchen, his name was Etchy, and he was like a, a blood. And one day he came up to me, he's like, hey, bro, you got to help me out. I'm like, what's up? He goes, my freezers are slipping. <laughs> what? My freezers are fucking up. You got to help me out. I'm like, what are you talking about? What the fuck is a freeze? He goes, a freeze. When you don't practice it, people could tell the difference in your voice. Mm -hmm. When you don't practice saying freeze, when you're going to rob somebody. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this motherfucker. Die. This motherfucker <laughs> will come into the dining area and go, freeze! <laughs> he will go, don't report me. I, I just want to try it. He goes, my brother got out of jail, didn't practice his freezer. He got locked up a week later. Because <laughs> his, freezer, his freezers didn't have no confidence behind him. I mean, bro, I'm like, this is a funny situation here. I mean, that's a bit. It's yeah. a bit. It's a bit. Freeze. So I'm yeah. like, I would, don't do it. Don't do it. And this went on. And I became like the social commentary for the kitchen, mm. right? So now afterward, they would think like, Cuba, get up there and say some words. Oh, so they're asking you, they're yeah. pushing yeah. you to do it. They're going to get up there. Because, at, listen, at that time, we weren't as sensitive as we are today. Of course, of course. You could goof on brothers. We all goofed on red. Yeah. You know, everybody goofed on red. Yeah. Everybody goofed on the bikers. Everybody goofed on... Yeah. Uh, that was it. You know, yeah. he just goofed. Yeah. So I didn't have many material. He's like white yeah. I didn't have any material written. It's not like I wrote material. Yeah, you just wrote something. I would go up there and just do, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Yeah. Look at this motherfucker with these fucking shoes on. What, your mother didn't get you better shoes? And, and one day, the, the guy in the library was from Buffalo. He killed his wife and the mailman. The mailman was fucking his wife, wow. so he killed the wife Special and his mailman. They gave him like dirty fucking <laughs> shits. But the guy was a genius. And I'll never forget, he came up to me one day and he goes, hey man, here's a notebook so you can write your jokes in. And I go, notebook? I ain't got no notebook. I ain't got no, you know. He goes, you don't write before you go up there? And I go, no. And this motherfucker looked at me and goes, listen, I'm gonna get out of here in about two years. If I get out and you're not doing stand-up, I'm gonna hunt you down and kill you. <laughs> <laughs>
Similar to Joey Diaz, Ali Sadiq had also not considered stand-up comedy as a career path prior to being arrested. But once he was released from prison, Ali quickly found success as a comic. Joey Diaz has a famous story of like meeting someone in prison who said if he's not doing stand-up by the time he's out, he was going to murder him. Did you know you're funny in prison? Was there a moment where you're telling jokes that you're like, this might be what I want to do for the rest of my life? I found that muscle while I was inside. Due to me just being a regular, I, I think this is the thing, because I, I don't try to make things too complicated. I'm a regular guy that grew up in a neighborhood that just was jovially sarcastic. Just talk about people on the bus, talk about me in the neighborhood. Just when something arises, I say something that may be funny, but it was no plan. I got out in 19, October of 1997. I did stand up for a year. 99, I taped for Comic View. It comes out in 2000. So 18 months after I get out of prison, I'm on TV. Be sure to check out our full interview with Ali Sadiq on the end screen right after this. And if you have any free time, please consider giving it a like and leaving a comment for the algorithm. Thank you very much. That joke world. And the world is WRLD. That's a great uh, YouTube channel, Joke World. Check it out.